Hey guys, this is Brian over at Obedia, and we're going to continue talking about Personas' Studio One digital audio workstation. I've had a lot of questions about this uh, DAW, and so I'd like to start just showing you guys how it works. And um, today we're going to talk about setting up your audio device in Studio One, getting you started so that you can start recording, playing back audio, things like that. So when you uh, first open up Studio One, it's going to give you this landing page, and uh, here you'll see a lot of the different things that you can uh, access very quickly in Studio One. Um, you'll have access to your artist profile, your recent files, uh, also to the news feed, which I think is definitely one of the coolest things um, that Studio One has going for it, because here you'll find out about updates and things like that. And uh, But of course, one of the most important things you're going to have access to initially here is the audio setup. So to set up our audio device, all we've got to do is click on Configure Audio Device. This is going to bring up the Configure Audio Device window. And uh, from here, all we need to do is select our audio device from our pull-down menu. Now, you'll notice I have a lot of different audio devices, uh, and that's because I have a lot of different audio cards on my system. Now, one of the cool things about Studio One is that it works with uh, pretty much any audio device that uh, you throw at it. It's not a proprietary system, so you don't have to have a Personas audio interface to use with it. Now, if you buy a Personas audio interface, you're probably going to get Studio One with it, which is also very cool because it lets you get started right out of the box, but you don't have to use your Personas Audio interface in order to use Studio One. So uh, in my case, I'm going to use my M-Audio Delta ASIO. Now, you'll notice that I have a lot of devices that say ASIO next to them. You want to stick with a, an audio device that has ASIO next to it, and the reason for that is just simply that the ASIO protocol is much uh, faster and well-suited for audio um, using the Windows uh, audio system to record audio uh, if you're using a built-in audio card on your computer or something like that. You could very well see a lot of slowdown and audio issues, and uh, so typically it's much better to stick with an ASIO device. If you don't have an ASIO audio device on your computer, you can use ASIO for all. You can get ASIO for all for free. It's a download from their website, and that will allow you to use the ASIO protocol on your uh, Windows audio uh, device. Now, the next thing that you uh, can make some configurations to here is the device block size and the internal block size. Now, you'll notice that mine is currently set to 512 samples on both. Now, uh, if you have a core audio device, uh, this will look a little bit different. The block size setting will have a horizontal slider, and uh, using that horizontal slider, you'll be able to change uh, the sample sizes. But in the case of my, uh, my M-Audio Delta ASIO card, um, I don't have that. It's just going to lock itself at 512 samples. If I uncheck the lock button that I've got right here, I can change the internal block size. Uh, although typically you want to probably just go ahead and leave the lock enabled for right now. Um, if, if it is unlocked, the internal block size uh, can be selected from the drop-down menu, obviously. And um, usually if you're not sure about this, the best thing to do is to just leave it set uh, to the device block size, which is going to be this reading right up here. So the device block size is 512 samples, and I'm just going to go ahead and leave the internal block size also at 512 samples. Now, by default, the process precision section in uh, Studio One is set to 32-bit, which is single. You can double that up to 64-bit, um, which uh, can give you some some better performance in some cases but unless you have issues with performance or anything like that you probably just want to leave this again at the default setting which is going to be single 32-bit now you'll also have the option for enabling multiprocessing here and the cpu cores um, and both of these essentially are should speed up the processing of your audio uh, again if you have uh, issues with performance or anything like that you may want to uncheck some of these but otherwise you probably want to just leave these at the default uh, with enable MIDI processing uh, multiprocessing checked and use CPU cores checked as well now when you're done with all of this in the bottom half of this window you are going to have a 
an overall uh, readout of what your final input and output latency are, uh, what the sample rate is that you're working at, and what bit depth is that you are working with. So this will be your final results of everything that you set up up here. Now when we're done with all of that, all we've got to do is hit the apply button and then hit OK and that'll close up the audio device configuration. Now one of the next things that we want to talk about after that in Studio One is the software input and output channels. Um, now in Studio One and in most uh, recording applications, audio tracks, they directly use your hardware uh, audio devices channels. And so in Studio One, there's a, a layer of software input output channels between your hardware audio device channels and your tracks. And the good thing about this uh, is that it'll, it gives you a, a little bit more space to work with when it comes to your project. So if you produce a song in your studio and you use a multi-channel interface and then you take that song file over to your friend's studio uh, where you're using a different audio interface, you can just connect your friend's uh, audio interface uh, channels to the correct software input output channels uh, in your project and that will allow you to continue working on the project even with a different uh, piece of hardware. So when we talk about the uh, audio input and output setup menu uh, we can access that by opening up a project. So the first thing that we need to do is uh, in Studio One just open up a recent file. I'm just going to open up my one called New Song here. So now I've got this, uh, this file open that I have been working with and uh, what I can do is I need to open up the audio input and output setup menu. So to do that, I click on song and I click on song setup. Now in the audio input output setup section, uh, this is where I will see uh, two tabs. One will be marked inputs and the other is marked outputs. Now here I can set up, of course, the inputs and the outputs for my, my audio card I'm and I'm really only restricted by what uh, the number of inputs and outputs my audio card has. So what I can do here is uh, I can just click on add stereo or add mono and this will add new inputs to the input section uh, of the virtual routing here for my M-Audio Delta ASIO card. Now uh, you'll notice here on the top half I've got a list of what inputs I have available to me for this card. So this card has an analog one and two, it has a spdif left and right, and then it has a monitor left and right. So I can just continue to add buses and they will be added to all of these. Now I can uh, enable or uh, disenable one of these by just clicking on them and that will remove them and make them inactive. Once I've done that, I can click on Make Default, and that will pop up a uh, menu that will ask me if this is the way that I want things to be set up for new songs. I can hit Yes, and this way I won't have to do this again. Now, if I click on the Outputs tab, this will show me the outputs that I have available to me on my audio device, and this is where I can select uh, what outputs on my audio, audio device I want to use as the primary outputs uh, to go into my studio monitors, my headphones, things like that. So in my case, with this uh, Delta card, I have analog left and right, and I have a SPDIF left and right, and I'm just going to stick with the analog left and right. I can switch over to SPDIF, however, if I want by just clicking under the three and that's going to switch the left and right outputs over to the SPDIF. I'm going to stick with the analogs again. I can also select QMix here and the QMix is uh, for setting up a uh, quick and easy way to do a mix that is separate from my primary mix and that's typically if I want to send a different mix to uh, someone who is recording a guitar or recording a vocal. It's typically for monitoring and uh, we'll make use of that later on. Now I can also add sub outs from this window as well and this is where I could make separate outputs that I could bus out to uh, other outputs in my studio, things like that. And to create a sub output all I again have to do is click on the add button. And each time I click add this is going to create a new sub output. And again I can move the output of these channels just by clicking uh, underneath the section that I want to move them to and that's going to set up that section to be the new output for that sub output that I have created. I can also set up my QMix on these sub outputs if I want or again if I want to just leave my QMix on my primary output on my main out I can just leave it set up as such. If I want to remove any of these sub outputs again I just select one, I click remove and that removes the sub output. 
Now this is also where I can set the audition. Now auditioning is used uh, when auditioning clips in the, uh, the clip browser, things like that in Studio One. And uh, so if I create new outputs, I can select a different section for the auditioning to happen from. So I could theoretically have the auditioning of clips and things like that happen on a separate output than my primary main output. I don't really need to do that because typically if I'm going to be auditioning new clips or things like that, I'm just going to want to do it through my studio monitors, especially for the kind of production I'm going to be using. But again, this is where you can quickly and easily set up those uh, separate sub outputs in the case that you need to be doing some kind of sub mixing or something along those lines. Now, while we're in this window, after we've done all of these setups, again, we want to hit apply. We can hit OK. If we want to go back to the options setup for our audio device, all we've got to do is click on the options button right here, and that'll bring us right back into the audio device setup so we can do some other uh, tweaks and various other configurations to the audio device here if we wanted to, and then just click on song setup. So when we're all done with that, all we've got to do is hit OK. And now when we're back into our song view, uh, there's one other thing that we can make use of after we've done all these configurations, and that is the performance monitor. The performance monitor is accessed by clicking on the view uh, menu, and then we can scroll down and we can select performance monitor. Now the performance monitor is going to give us a uh, digital readout of how much our CPU is being used, how much our disk is being accessed, things like that and uh, it'll show us if we're peaking out or if we're having times when we're just using too much processing power on the system and if that's the case we'll want to go back into uh, our audio device setup and again maybe change some things like go from 64-bit precision to 32-bit precision things like that in order to take some wear off of the system so that's it for today for uh, Persona Studio One I hope this has been useful to you guys we will be talking again as I say more about Studio One one as time goes on. If you have questions about Studio One, feel free to uh, leave them for me. You can get in touch with me, brian at obedia.com. You can also find me on Twitter at twitter.com forward slash obedia tutor. Uh, if you are interested in a one-on-one -on -one tutoring session with an obedia tutor, you can sign up at obedia.com forward slash register. And uh, we do offer sign up bonuses to new uh, clients who sign up with us. So feel free to give us a call if you have any questions. And as always, thank you for watching. We'll see you again soon. Hey,